Hey guys, what is up? It's time to review the Royal Clutch RK918 Mechanical Keyboard. On my last video, I did a review on the ROG Strix Impact 2 Gaming Mouse. If you have not seen the video yet, uh, you may check it out on the link above or on the description down below. My unboxing of the Royal Clutch RK918 is the most viewed video on my channel so far. So thank you so much guys for watching, much appreciated. That is why in this video, we're going to talk all about the RK918 and we're going to talk about its features, pros and cons, and I'll show you the different LED patterns and how you can set it in both the hotkey and the software. And lastly, I'll be answering a couple of questions asked in the unboxing video. I know I have already like provided my answer as well on the comment section um, on that video, but hopefully I can provide more info um, in this video. Mark here, thanks for tuning in to MacB TV. If you are new to the gaming PC world like me and would like to know more about computers, I will be sharing the things I've learned here on this channel, so hit the subscribe button, click that notification bell, so we'll go ahead and learn together. And now for the Royal Clutch RK918 Mechanical Keyboard. I have been using this keyboard for over a month now and it's time for a review. First off, let's start with uh, things that I like about the RK918. The first one would be the back plate. Um, it is an aluminum alloy panel which gives more durability to the keyboard. Another one is that you can set the LED pattern for the backlight and the side lamp separately. And also they have an individual light modes on their own. And speaking of, there are a lot of um, patterns as well that you can select from. Um, some of them are actually interactive which is um, pretty cool. The keys also are very responsive. I have not experienced any delay so far. The keycaps are swappable. I did see a review where they use the double shot pudding keycaps which is pretty dope as it enhances the individual keys. I would probably upgrade to that type of keycaps as well in the future. Now for the cons of the RK918, the first one would probably be the one that I have already mentioned on the unboxing video which is actually the plasticky feel on the bottom. But don't let it actually fool you because it's actually like pretty sturdy. Another one is that the keys are really elevated and it gets uncomfortable when you use the keyboard for a long period of time. But maybe it's just me because I'm actually not used to it yet. I was like using a slim type keyboard um, before. It also does not have that premium feel as it feels hollow when typing. But maybe because it's a red switch, um, it would actually play a big factor as the red switch is designed to don't have that type of feedback or resistance. And lastly, the software is unstable. Um, there are times that the software will not run on startup and you have to manually uh, like start the application. Next up we have are the features. The first one is that there are two colors that you can select from which is actually the white and the black. But both of them actually have the same color of the bottom part which is white. Next is that they have different switches that you can select from. First one is the red switch which is the one I have and we have the blue switch and the brown um, switch. It also has 18 RGB backlight modes. Also has an anti-ghosting keyboard feature where all the 108 keys are conflict free. And lastly the double shot keycaps which means that unlike printing, the double shot keycap is produced when two layers of plastic are molded into each other. Now for the questions from the unboxing video, the first one we have is from Bridget and Castillo. But before that, I just want to thank Bridget for providing the link uh, of the driver or software. It's actually very helpful. It was actually a poor researching skill for me. But I later realized that um, you actually need to go through different sections to find what you want for a specific product. So Royal Clutch, if you get to watch this video, I hope that you actually update the website. It's pretty difficult to find anything in there. But anyway, the question uh, of Bridget was regarding its durability since I mentioned um, that feel at the bottom. Um, I already mentioned it um, earlier as well that um, don't let uh, the plastic feel fool you as it is actually pretty sturdy. So the next question is from FRH Rafi. I'm not sure if I'm saying it correctly. He was asking um, if it can be recommended for FPS gaming or if it is recommended for FPS gamers. I 
can't say if I can recommend it. I didn't really play that much FPS game on this keyboard yet. I recently played CSGO, COD, and just recently as well, Valorant. So it did actually work well for me, but I don't really have that much comparison to other mechanical keyboards as well to actually say or recommend the keyboard. But it would probably be recommended to use like a TKL keyboard instead of a full size one when you're using it solely for FPS gaming. Because it is actually more efficient when in terms of desktop space. Someone did actually reply recommending the TKL keyboard as well, but he also mentioned um, using like a red switch or a black switch. I don't really want to go deep into that discussion as it's actually an ongoing debate on which is actually best for games or whatnot. So yeah, I'll prefer not to go deep into that discussion. Another question is from Algin Mandy and he was asking if the keyboard is hot swappable. I might have misunderstood the question as I initially thought he was referring to the keycaps. Well, the keycaps are hot swappable. You can change it anytime even if it's plugged in. But if not, then he might be referring to the switches. Um, well, I can't really provide any concrete information as I have not like stripped down on the keyboard yet. I don't think I will be for a long time, uh, not unless I have to because I don't really have a backup keyboard. For me, I don't think it is hot swappable because I didn't see or didn't find any spare parts sold for Royal Clutch or RK918. Any switches sold at all on uh, the Royal Clutch. Um, website which I might have actually just missed again but yeah if you're the manufacturer and you design or manufacture a hot swappable keyboard then I will probably sell the spare parts as well but that's just me um, you might actually find um, other information for the RK you know, and Nate, but I'll, I'll leave it up to you if it is and other questions were regarding the LEDs or the patterns which I will actually be showing you next
Hey guys, on this part of the video, I'm just going to give you a quick tour on the software that you can use for the Royal Clutch RK918 Mechanical Keyboard. But first off, you'll need to download the driver software from the RKGaming.com website, the official website of Royal Clutch. Also, the link for the website will be provided on the description down below. Once you have successfully downloaded and installed the driver software, you need to launch the app called Gaming Force Z. This is the app that you need to launch to open this window right here. To begin, let's start with the profile button here on the upper left corner. If you click that, you'll see another window um, where you can select the profile that you like to set. Also, you'll have the option to create a new one or remove um, a profile. And to the opposite side of that, you'll have the settings menu here where you can select the UI text color to your liking, as well as the language where you can only select just three options here. Also, it has a reset to default button on the lower left corner. Now, moving on to the customize tab. In this tab, you can set a specific function to a certain key. You can set any of these functions right here, but let's go through it one by one. The first one we have is the default function, which sets the default function of that key. Then we have the keyboard function, where you can set a different key on the keyboard. Moving on to the mouse function is that we have or you can select a specific button on the mouse so that it will run on that key. Another one you can set is the macro function. Um, since I do not have any macros created yet, I don't have anything on this list. But you can set the macro to play one time, play multiple times, or click to stop. For the one time, it will only run the sequence once. While you play multiple times, you will need to set or define the loop count. Or click to stop right here is that you need to press the button again to stop running the macro. Next one we have is the combo key. The combo key will allow you to press multiple buttons at the same time. You just need to select or set the buttons right here. You can set up to two to three buttons on this one. Moving on to the next function, which is the run program. On this function, you can target this one to run a specific .exe file so that once you press the key, it will run that specific .exe. You also have an option to input a URL, which once you press the button, it will open up the URL to your default browser. Next one we have is the multimedia function where you can set this um, specific multimedia function to that specific key. The next one we have is the Windows hotkey where you can select or set a specific Windows function to that specific key. And lastly, we have is the forbidden function where it will disable or basically will remove all function on that key. Let's go ahead and check out the lighting tab. In this tab, you can switch the RGB modes for your backlight and side lamp. On the first one, we have the button here is to disable or enable the RGB function of the keyboard. You also have the drop down menu here that will list all the modes for your backlight and your side light. The one that has the rim in front of the name here will be the modes for your side lamp. And once you have selected a mode, you can change the color. Right now, I have the full color on uh, to display all the colors depending on the mode that you have selected. You can untick the one so that you can select a single color instead. You'll also have an option to change the direction of the LED pattern as well as to set the speed and the brightness. Another option that you can set or another mode that you can set is the user defined. If you click this small keyboard icon symbol here, you can set a specific color to a specific key. I have mine as the WASD to set to red while the RFPs are set to green. You can define more options or you can actually set all the keys to a different colors if you like. Now moving on to another tab we have is the gaming mode. For the gaming mode, this is just to simply enable or disable a specific function of keys. If you enable this one, you have an option to disable the Alt tab, Alt F4 or Windows key. And lastly, we have is the macro tab where you can create or record a certain sequence of keys so that you can set it to function on a single specific key. 
So that's all for the app. Let me know what you think about the software. If you like it or not, let me know in the comment section down below. I guess that's it guys. Thank you for watching. I hope this video helped. And if it did, please give it a thumbs up and don't forget to hit the subscribe button. Click that notification bell so you'll be updated on my latest videos. And see you on the next one. Adios.